Yes, we are at Dominic's Steakhouse, first time. He just brought out the bread. What kind of bread is that? It smells amazing. Garlic? Parmesan and sea salt. Garlic, Parmesan, and sea salt. Man, I wish you guys could smell how good this is right now. Leon, no? Is that... <laughs> Wine, wine with some steak. Happy birthday, Michaela. Thank you. How old are you, Michaela? 29. 29. Damn, you look so fine. Let's go. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Good morning and happy Wednesday. I hope everybody's having a really good day. I wanted to just jump on here and give a little update about where we're currently at with the treatments. So I'm actually here right now. Got here a little bit earlier because I had a gap in between working out and coming here. So I just figured I could call my Uber <laughs> and they could drop me off now. So I'm just waiting until I have to go in. But this is going to be my third treatment. I think when we last kind of spoke um, I was going in for my second, so I wasn't able to really recap with that one. So that's kind of what I wanted to do now. So for that session that I had on Monday, it was my first two hour session. And, you know, I thought going into it that I was going to expect, and you should never really assume again, like I'm new to this, but uh, it wasn't as, I guess, intense as what I was expecting. Um, just because two hours seems like, oh wow, you're in that for two hours long. Um, but really, I think it's that dose that you're given for that spread out over two hours. So you're in that state for two hours, but it wasn't as intense, I guess, as what I was expecting it to be. But it was great, obviously, and super beneficial. So um, the one, I just want to kind of share like a couple of like good things and then bad things, I guess. Um, so the first thing, two hours long for an IV infusion probably should have expected I'm gonna to have to like pee but I've never had to like get up during an IV just like a normal IV that I've ever gotten during so in my mind I <laughs> knew I had to pee but I was so relaxed I didn't want to get up but then I was having like flashbacks to me holding going to the bathroom on the plane when I basically you know made myself get a kidney infection so I was <laughs> Like in my head, like, oh my God, I don't want another kidney infection. So I was like, really, it was really hard for me to relax once that was in my head during, and like in that state. So when they came back to like check my blood pressure and stuff again, I like lifted up my face mask. I was like, so do people like get up to go to the bathroom? <laughs> and so they stopped the IV, unhooked me, let me go. So it was like in the middle of that. So it kind of did put a little pause and like, I guess, interruption to the session. And I feel like that maybe wasn't allowing me to really let go just because <laughs> I was thinking about that and that was really on my mind and just seemed like super urgent and a priority in that time. So it still was a great session. Um, and they said that they did take up my dose a little bit more, but again, that's spread out over two hours versus one hour. Um, but today's session is an, an hour again, so they go back and forth. Um, but I did wanna kind of share how in that last video I said that you know my two main reasons for getting this is to really try to get rid of my premenstrual depression and then also work on anxiety as well I just want to say I started my cycle yesterday and I was actually really shocked that I started my cycle yesterday because again I usually get the warning sign three to four days before of just like not wanting to talk to anybody and you know feeling really depressed I didn't have that at all so when I got my period I woke up and my like boobs were really swollen so I'm like huh I wonder if I'm supposed to be getting my period soon because again like the way that I know that I'm about to start is because I want to withdraw from everyone and everything I didn't have that though so I was actually like really blown away that I started my cycle yesterday the boobs kind of gave it away but that's why I I'm actually really excited to finish out these sessions because I didn't have those really low lows before. Um, so, you know, again, there could be a lot of factors playing into that as to why maybe I didn't, but I mean, obviously I was two sessions in by this point of the ketamine, uh, IV ketamine, and I didn't have any of those issues before. So, like I have goosebumps right now. Like I think that is the coolest thing ever. So again, like I really am gonna be in tune with that going into next month and the following to see, you know, if I really am no longer experiencing already the the 
you know, depressed state right before, but I kind of wanted to tell you guys that, uh, you know, and I got it yesterday and I was like, well, all right, then, let's go. Um, so that's really cool. But, um, then when, you know, it comes to like the anxiety and everything, you know, I think I actually had like a, a moment earlier today where I think I could have really let myself go back to my old ways of kind of having like a freak out moment because schedules changing and things like that or feeling just really flustered. And I definitely felt like I could talk through it more instead of my immediate reactions, usually screaming and yelling and not like physical or anything, but just like I get emotional and I get super worked up easy. And I felt like I could control that a lot more. Still got a little worked up, but I felt like I could talk things through instead of like freaking out and yelling and everything. So I feel like things are working. Um, and that's only after two sessions. So um, like I said, this one is a one hour and uh, you know, I'll continue. Oh my God, there's a dog. There's a dog just running around right now. Um, but I'll definitely keep you know all of you guys updated. And I think as long as my phone battery um, cooperates, which it should, uh, I think this is the time where I'll probably try to you know get a session filmed a little bit more where it's the whole thing. Not that it's really exciting. It's me laying in a chair. But I feel a little bit more comfortable now and knowing it's a one hour session. So we'll see kind of what I can get. But, um, you know, I really appreciate all of your guys' like kind words on the videos and the comments yesterday uh, that was posted. Um, you know, and again, I don't think, you know, I have maybe too many um, mental health issues, but just hearing that you guys are really open to it and accepting of that. Um, I've gotten some really cool text messages and messages through Instagram. So again, just continue to ask questions. I love it. And, uh, you know, the more that I'm doing this, the more that I can, you know, give that advice. So. I'm about to go ahead in and I will follow up with you guys later. Bye. Way to pick up Lauren from her IV ketamine therapy. And I just ran into this and I was like, this is so cool. She really doesn't like flowers, but you know what? Sometimes it's nice to get flowers just because. And I lost all the skull. That was pretty cool. So hopefully she's surprised. They smell lovely. Oh, hi. Sorry, I didn't know. I thought you were coming out this way. It's so funny. I don't know why, but at one point. Aw! Whoa! Whoa! Those are cool. I got you a little surprise. That's cool. You like it? Where'd you find that? Secret. That's dope. You like it? Yeah. Yay. That's sick. I thought it was pretty sick, too. Yay. Thank you. Yeah. I know you don't really like flowers, but sometimes it's uh, nice to get that's flowers. And that's that's what I said. I was like, that's pretty dope. <laughs> is this Trader Joe's? No, it's not Trader Joe's. Oh, because remember they I found had a flower the shop. One. I found a flower shop right down the road here. Really? So, yeah. Oh my pretty god. Pretty dope, they right? Smell good. Yeah, they smell lovely. <laughs> Oh my God, that is sick. You did it. Yeah. Yeah. That shit. Woo! Wow. Look at that. It came along so well. I love it. Yeah, I love this. This is a vibe in here. It's gonna become more of a vibe, but this is a vibe. It's come together. It's come a long way. And we've had really a lot of fun with it. Yeah. And Jamie's helped us a lot too. Like a lot. <laughs> so we got the bolts for the desk, the standing desk. So that should be done this weekend. And Super then right. honestly, that's it. Yeah. We have the desk. We have a couple more things we're going to hang on the wall. But the main thing is our LED light is up. And it is how dope does it look? It's so, so cool. This is like the perfect content setup. Yeah. Um, so I've been talking to Chase and Huey, um, who help us with a lot of the you know behind the scenes um, graphics and photos and, and images and video um, about potentially having some videos and maybe even a future podcast out of here. This is like the perfect spot for it. Yeah. It's so cool. And I've always wanted the podcast so. And honestly, the timing of this was really good because when we started this, it was so 
it was a sauna in here. I mean, we're going to definitely have to get, once it gets warm again, I mean, now it cooled down, so we're good, but we'll definitely have to get like an air conditioning unit in here or something, but, um, yes, yeah, perfect temperature now. Our goal was to get it done before the next launch. So yeah. And next launch is 11, 11. Super excited about it. We got the same tea. Except in black. black. Show the back. Show the back. I love how the back looks with the black. Looks good. Looks sick. I'm a huge fan of black. I'm you know, team we might, black. Oh, we might as well reveal it in this video. Why not? Yeah, why not? And yeah. the beanie with the manifested leather patch on the front. Okay. What else we got? Boo? We also have an oversized spirit jersey, which has the burger ball on the front. It has the phases of the moon going on the left front side and on the back it says manifested across the shoulder blades. It's absolutely beautiful. And then for this, those of you ravers out there. We are so excited about manifested pashminas. So on the like side, yeah, manifested. And then it has the Merkaba in the middle. And on the other side, is the faces of the moon. And these are so soft. So I'm very particular when it comes to pashminas because I usually wear them when I'm raving and they're, you know, go around your neck and I get so hot. So I wanted a light material where I'd be comfortable in and that's it. Yeah. It's very soft, very light, and very sleek. I just love the colors of it, like the pop of gold. Yeah. Black and gold, baby. And then so we still have like a lot of crossbodies left. Like Journal, this. socks. Yes. So 1111, be on the lookout for the next drop. We're going to be launching more hoodies as well because those sold out during the first drop. These hoodies are so, they, the quality is amazing. I'm just happy to hear um, all the feedback that you guys are loving them as well. Um, yeah, the pre-orders went out and I think today basically almost everybody got their order. So yeah, about half the people got them, I'm sure. But um, yeah, we're just really excited about what's to come. Just wanted to show off our new LED manifested light. And so, what was the brand again? I'm well, sure somebody's gonna ask. Remember. My yeah. Neon, I think myneon.com. Yeah, but the turnaround time was awesome. It was like 10 to 12 days. Yeah, we got it in like I'd say two weeks. And I really like that one. There's a lot, if you ever search for custom LED signs, it took you me to like at least 20 different websites. But um, <laughs> this one, the myneon.com, they had like a fast turnaround at warranty, the mounting kit, a controller. And that was all about like the price of like what some of these places were charging for not that <laughs> and, like for yeah. like weeks on weeks of a yeah, turnaround. So 10 out of 10 would recommend. Yeah. I love it. It's like a nice little nightlight. I know it's this, so cozy. This is actually here. dim. This bitch gets so bright. It actually yeah. blinds you. Yeah, that's 40%. That's 40%. That's 40%. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, the 100% is really bright. Like it blinds you. Yeah, you actually can't even see it because it's so bright. I love it. Awesome. But yeah, that's it for tonight. It's been a busy day. Busy day. Yeah, it was she, a rest day, but... It's been a rest day for me too, but she was at Buff Beauty doing Botox all day. And then I was at home doing back-end VA business all day. Proud of you. And then she did my Botox. So I can't wait. Yeah, that'll day. kick in in a few days. Yeah, it's been a really productive day. And now it's time to go eat. Yes. Bye. Show day Saturday. Marissa, you ready to rock? I'm ready. She got like a whopping two hours of sleep. <laughs> Typical <laughs> show day shit. Seven. I mean, yeah. No, yeah. It's it's all good. It's all good. She woke up feeling and looking very tight. Lauren's about to apply these lashes on her. Is this a specific technique, Lauren? Is this hard to do? Is it hard to do yourself, Marissa, or what? I love doing eyelashes. Do you? So Lauren's put eyelashes on me before. Closed, but like looking down. Such an awkward feeling. Yeah. I'm not a big fan, What's but getting the eyelashes on. Oh, really? Why did why did I have eyelashes before? Did wait, Shannon did that to me, didn't she? Uh, she just seemed like a makeup she, artist. Shannon, um, she's a makeup artist, one of our good friends. She applied makeup just to like, you know, test it out for competitions, and she applied the uh, eyelashes on myself, and my eyes just kept 
pouring. I was like, how do girls do this on a daily I basis? Babies when it comes to the things that we do. It was pretty relieving though, pulling them off, I will say. Yeah. Oh, that's the best thing in the whole world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So we're happy to have Marissa in town because I texted her about four days ago. Uh, Marissa, you want to come to Phoenix and hop in the pro show? And being the amazing coachable athlete she was, she's like, fuck yeah, I'm down. So here, here we are. Yeah, yeah, and we're over here streaming. We have a couple other clients competing over there in Florida. The Clash figure's about to go on. Obviously, Men's Seek is up. So we're going to be streaming that while watching the show here in Arizona. I love show day Saturdays. Show day Starbucks Saturday. Here we go. We are on our way to the show. Think over my face. What do you have on your face? Oh, she. There you go. It's that is bright as hell. It's really bright out. Yeah. Uh, we are on our way to the show right now. Had to pick up some Starbucks first and check it out. Dude, what's, what do you want me to do? You want this now? Well, there you go. Is that better? Yeah, thanks. There we, there we go. go. Is that better? That's yeah, much better. There we go. Sorry. And you didn't sneeze. Uh -uh. <laughs> Does anybody else sneeze when they look at the sun? Dude, this happens to this girl <laughs> all the time. But um, anyway, once November hits, Starbucks does not fucking play games, everybody. Holiday cups are here. The Did wifey you already got... No, I didn't get anything. She got the peppermint. Um, I, I was going to... One pump of peppermint and sugar-free I'll probably get... I know I'm going to get another round of Starbucks later today, so... Uh, I like to, you know, have a, just pretty much black coffee or just a little bit of sugar-free uh, stevia or vanilla or something like that to start the day off with. But I'll probably get peppermint, maybe a little the bit. One pump later. goes a long way. Okay. No, I'm good right now. Thanks, hon. One pump, maybe really. But good. yeah, we we're on the way to the venue, and one of our bikini girls, Simona, just called us, and she was like, "Hey." Uh, are you on the way to the venue? I was like, yeah. She's like, can you pick me up? My car will not start. And like, damn. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely no problem whatsoever. So Poor we're going to go pick, pick up. up. Yeah, she's about seven minutes from the venue. So it actually worked out really well. So, uh, Poor thing, yeah, damn, that's not anything you want to deal with on a show day. She yeah. sounded super calm about it. But she it, did. Yeah, yeah. She's, I'm actually uh, really Simone, Simone's pretty good at keeping her stress down, yeah. and that's something like that we advocate for all of our clients is just keeping that stress in check. It's okay, Usa, breathe, uh, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll definitely, uh, you know, make do with whatever happens. But um, yeah, she seemed pretty pretty chill about it. She's like, yeah, my car, car will start. But uh, yeah, it's show day, so let's go. <laughs> I think she's excited for that. She's excited for the <laughs> Cineholic cinnamon rolls that yeah, she's got later she today. I miss Cineholic. Yeah, we had that in Ohio. We, uh, in Ohio, what? Dude, I, I think that was the last time that I personally had it. You yeah, said you had it here you, in Arizona. Yes, yeah, there's one, there's a couple here in Arizona. And it was like kind of the first like couple months, I think, of us moving out here. I was doing, I was studying for my Botox stuff. And the girl that I was doing that with, she lived right by one. So a little study break, we went and got some Cineholic. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't, that was like, what I have, like two years ago, two and a half years ago. So yeah. it's been a minute. I'm hoping she'll share. <laughs> yep, but uh, we still have Marissa at the house. I tanned her. She's putting up on her makeup and uh, doing her hair right now. And she's going to be Ubering to the venue. So we just had to be there a little bit early because the uh, amateurs, we have three amateur girls competing, are competing now 8 a.m., which is an early show time. Um, and then the, the pros are going to go on. So we'll get some stage footage of all the lovely ladies here in a little bit. But, man, I just love show day Saturday. Yeah, so let's go, ladies. So excited. Yo, what the hell happened? Fucking car broke down. Picking up this you bomb. Saved the day, though. Yeah, where's your car at? Over there. So, do you think it's like a battery issue or what? Yeah, the brake won't even like. All right, well, coach coming to save the day. Get in, girl. We got a show to win. <laughs> 61. Is that 61, maybe? The blue. The blue suit on the right. Yeah. Add face forward. That's right diagonal. 77 and 61. Switch 77 and Let's there go, we go. Page. Still 180. Face that back wall. Add face forward. Good page. Deep, 
Marissa just stepped off stage, fifth place. Let's go, second pro show in a row, top five. So proud of you, girl. How's it feel? Feels good. Feel good? Yep. Definitely came in even better, and that's always the goal. Um, Not bad for three-day prep. Three-day prep, yeah. So fun fact, I text Marissa uh, on Tuesday, a few days. I was like, yo, what are the odds we can get you here in Arizona? And she's like, wait, you really think I could do it? I was like, bet. So we dropped about five pounds in a few days, and we made it happen. So. Yeah. Very happy with this. So, um, yeah, let's take off the jersey. Yay! So pretty out tonight. Look at it, girl. Let's go. Woo. Next up, we got Sacramento next week. Back pro, and then Hawaii. I'm so excited. So we're going to Hawaii <laughs> for the first time. That'll be her last show of the season. So. Really yep. excited about it. Yep. Congrats, girl. Hey, happy Sunday, fun day, fam. Marissa, how we feeling? Tired. Tired. So after show day, we we uh, as you guys saw, probably some clips. Did you get much footage, babe? We were at a oh, rave. No. Once Great. again, you know, you guys know how we roll. Uh, we took Marissa out with us. We're like, Marissa, you're coming to to celebrate and rave the night away till two a.m. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> I'm very proud of you for hanging, and uh, it was a good time. So um, it is now ten a.m. Sunday, we're taking Marissa to the airport, and just like that, we are in peak week number two, going to the Sacramento Pro next week. You ready? You ready? I'm ready. Yeah, I'm so, ready. yeah, we got a fifth place last night. We're just going to continue to uh, work up the ranks. Very happy with how we dialed things in. We're just going to continue to show up, get more feedback in Sacramento next week, and then Hawaii in two weeks for her. So, it was a good show day. We also Ooh. had a lot of first places um yeah. Paige, the bikini girl um our bikini girl that uh competed in nbc portion she got first simona got third nika our masters bikini girl got second as well um and then we had some other athletes competing throughout the country up in um where was jordan at Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. We yeah. had a couple athletes in Pennsylvania. Both bikini girls won their classes, so they were both, both in the them. overall. Didn't get the overall, but it's still cool to have two of the four in the overall. Uh, our figure girl, Maria, who won an overall last week, got first place again. Looked to be second overall for her. And, um, yeah, I think that's about it. So, another great day for me. And we're going to drop Marissa off at the airport, head to brunch out with some clients and some friends. Yeah. Who else is joining? Who's joining us? Repeat of last weekend. <laughs> cool. Yeah, we love our Sunday fun days. Hot tub, hot tub work. Yeah, definitely. Maybe all day. Cover. That That's um, great. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying this weather now, Marissa, because she said she's going back to a snow 
advisory. So, we're uh, <laughs> awesome. All right, well, next up will probably be brunch because pancakes. Your boy needs some pancakes. Yay. Come on. What All right, today, uh, Sunday uh, fun day with the ladies here at Dutch Bros. Yeah. That's, good. That's good. This is Liana's first Dutch Bros experience. She is. What'd you get? Team White Coffee. You got um, salted caramel. Salted car caramel brev. Brevet. Brevet. And what's the brevet mean? You asked her, do you remember? Um, half yep. and half and espresso. Espresso. I was asking Lee. <laughs> She wasn't going to remember. I know. That's why I challenged her. I was like, were you actually, were you listening? All I heard was half and half. I was like, sold. Is it good? <laughs> yes. That's all that matters. And the thing is, I knew your mind shut off after she said Hi, it. Hi, Olivia. Hi. Hi. How are you doing this morning? Good. How are you? Doing good. Now that we got this, this good. coffee, look at the retro so style <laughs> decking hall since 92. Chocolate? Sugar Love it. Chocolate all right, here we are. Ecstasy brunch with the fam. Lee is at the head of the table. Pancakes. You're at the head of the table today. Oh, yes. How's it feel? Feels powerful. Powerful. <laughs> Let's go. How do you feel? What are you waiting on? You. Lee. What's the, what's the white on there? What, this? Yeah. Is it clean? Whipped cream? Really? I think. Nice. <laughs> Set. Go. <laughs> you know what. Oh, wait. We do. Oh, <laughs> oh, man. Why? This is going good already. All right. Ready. <laughs> ready. What's up, fam? <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's Friday. We're going to do a little something different for the vlog this week. Well, we had a Q&A before. Yeah, but not from we the an, anonymous true so this is this is a little bit different so um the big thing on instagram right now is the ngl anonymous and i was telling lauren i'm never gonna do that but i was like actually you know what let's just make a youtube video out of it yeah so it sounds like a good, also good too idea. i feel like people might hold back a little bit knowing that this might be in a youtube video versus in your inbox so the questions were too bad no <laughs> we did get some you got more than yeah so we're just though. gonna go through <gasps> the questions let's not burn this room down we're good. <laughs> First video in the new Manifested HQ. I love it. Does it, does it look good, Chase, on camera? <laughs> I think so, yeah. Okay. You see what Manifested that. Yay. Looks good. Figured it would. All right. <laughs> I'm going to go first. All right. All right, here we go. Let's dive on in. Send me anonymous messages. Ready? First one. Any pets? Like, yes. Do we have any pets? I don't know. My Obviously. little fur baby, Athena. Should I go get her? <laughs> no. Well, we have footage of her, so we'll just overlay footage yeah. of her. How yeah, I'm sure that? Chase has or something. An image. <laughs> yeah. So we have little one baby. bangle, Athena. She's beautiful. We love her to death, and we're potentially thinking about getting a secondary bangle that is gold color. So we have silver and gold. Yeah. But we have Athena's like a dog. That's why we love her so much. So it's a cat. Not as much work as a dog, but they do tricks. Yeah. Play fetch. Because <laughs> we got her, what, three, maybe four years ago? She's four years old now? It was May of 2017, I think. Yeah, Lauren was like, I want to get a kitty. And I told her I'm really not a cat person just because, well, a big legit. reason. <laughs> a big reason is because my eyes itch in water like a motherfucker. Um, I remember <laughs> when she was in undergrad and she Aww. had a cat. And was, Lulu. She was just like a black cat. A black cat. And every time I would stay over there, I'd wake up and my eyes were so puffy. I'm like... I'm good. I'm good. But I wasn't really like True being life. a baby about it because I didn't want her to like, you know, I wasn't going to be like, yo, dude, your cat like is fucking on my eyes. You said I that though when I said I was moving in with you. Yeah, I did. I was like, yo, we got to figure out something with this cat situation because my eyes are not handling it. Yeah. <laughs> so I told her if we're going to get a cat, it needs to be hypo. hypo and something just unique. And Bengals are very unique. So and you love her now. I absolutely love her. I love her. I really do. She's amazing. All right. You're next. <laughs> All right. What business mistakes did you and Dylan make and learn from when you first started BA? Lots of them. <laughs> but I'm glad we did too because it's the mistakes that we learned from and we were able to grow so much. Um, you go first. Well, you started BA, so I can't take the credit for that. Actually, yeah, I should probably start. So <laughs> um, a major mistake that I made early on was just not asking for additional help. Um, I was growing at a very fast rate just by myself 
And at the time, I thought that was great. You know, I know my business better than anybody. I'm growing. Nobody, I don't need anybody's help. And then I got to the point where I was like, holy shit, like the inquiries are coming in and I actually cannot take any more because my response times with my emails are taking. Hey, look, new lead. <laughs> hey, speaking of, we got new location. And this is exactly why I was like, yo, I need to hire some help yeah, because your boy cannot keep up, which is a great problem to have. So, um, you know, I was actually limiting my growth by not asking for additional help. So the point when I started asking for some more coaches, um, and now we actually have a COO, CFO, we have a lot of, Shout other, out Libby. A, lot of other, a lot of other people within our team, um, helping us, you know, with their specializations. Um, our team has grown exponentially since then. So that was a, the yeah. biggest thing, a biggest mistake that I would say I made early on is just not asking for additional help. It's okay to ask for help, and I highly encourage you do that. Also, too, I feel like you've grown more for, like, being more... You've been open-minded, but just you've gotten a lot better at not being too closed-minded when it comes to coaching or the way that you, yeah. you know, are trying to spread a message. Or Absolutely. You, you keep an open mind the entire time you've been coaching. I mean, we both do, but you've gotten a lot better at that, too. So you mean, like, specifically, like, dietetics like, and things like that? Macros are the only way. What I do is right. But then it's yeah. like you do well, start to, like... So you have to also understand, when I was in the game, I was pursuing my, my master's degree in medical dietetics to become a dietitian. There's hardly any dietitians in the bodybuilding realm. And this is when I was tapping into the online industry. Again, fairly new at this time. Um, and all that there was was meal plans. You know, yeah. eat this, not that, chicken, rice, broccoli. And at the time, I was very passionate. Like, yo, there's other ways. This is the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. And I was passionate about that. And that is, that's how we grew initially because we were doing things a lot differently yeah. than the media and the typical bodybuilding coach. Um, and I'm glad I had that mindset. But now as we have so much more experience, you know, seven, eight years in the industry, um, obviously, you know, there's multiple ways that you can do things, whether you're prepping for a bodybuilding show or prepping for the beach, just to look mm -hmm. good naked, whatever it may be. Um, you know, now we have several different approaches to where, you know, we not only do macros, but maybe we do have more restricted meal plans for some, if it does work for them. Um, but yeah, there's so many different methods and we have to develop a much more open mind to our coaching methodologies. Yeah. Do you think saunas and salt baths are beneficial to prep athletes as the approach as they approach their shows? I've heard it's okay and also that it interferes with being able to pull water during peak week. This is a great question and kind of a loaded question. So let's just kind of take things step by step. So first off, do you think saunas and salt baths are beneficial for prep athletes? Yes and no. So should, this person is asking more more along the lines of like peak peaking week. a physique and peak week. Um, so I'm gonna give you a couple different scenarios here. Most of the time, we're ready before peak week. So our body um, is in prime condition and we're just fine tuning variables going into peak week, fine tuning salt, sodium, carbohydrates, etc. Therefore, I'm not a big advocate of sitting in the sauna because that can actually throw off our electrolyte and fluid balance, which is the last thing that you want to do going to a show. Um, uh, how, I was right? going to say, if you're in like a, a division though, where you really do need to drop weight or make weight, then it would be beneficial. Bingo. So last week we actually had a classic with Z guy that was, um, you know, the day that he needed to make weight, um, two pounds over. So I was like, Hey man, let's go ahead. We need to sit in the sauna. So sit in the sauna. And, uh, that's exactly what he did for, you know, 30 minutes ish. And, uh, you know, we, we, we pulled some water weights and he made weight, but that was what we needed to do, um, for that time frame. Or, you know, if somebody is holding onto a little bit of water weight because they're inflamed a little bit, I'm a huge advocate of um, hot Epsom salt baths. I um, think those would probably be fine for a majority of people. Yeah, because you're not going to throw off your though, electrolyte no. balance too much as you would getting in a sauna. Because in the sauna, you're truly just sweating out the fluid, sweating yeah. out the salt and the potassium, which really can alter peaking the physique, um, especially with how close we're monitoring these variables. Um, again, but it all comes down to being ready before peak week. So you don't have to do these crazy measures of sitting in the sauna um, or doing anything like that. So yeah. yeah, they have their time in the place. Just depends on where the athlete is looking going into peak week. Um, anything else that we need to no, talk about? I, I, I was just about to say, I think you, you covered that one. Awesome question. All right. I know you don't really go on Spotify, so we could say SoundCloud for you, but SoundCloud, yeah. what was the last song you listened to on Spotify? Yeah, I no longer or use SoundCloud. Spotify I'll, anymore. I'll go on Spotify because I do use it. All right, let's see. 
The last song I listened to was, wait, how do you go to your history? <laughs> how do you go to history? I don't know. I don't, I don't <laughs> Spotify. Okay, go to, so. Let's go to you first while I look. Go to my SoundCloud? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> nobody's going to probably know this shit because I listened to some hard shit dubstep. <laughs> it is Shadows featuring Louis J. So Louis J, they're brothers and they throw down. Let's see your mind. I find it. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> here it comes. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Right. There we go. Wait, what was it? Did you say the name? Yeah. Okay, Shadows. Okay. Um, so yeah, that was going to the gym. So that was the last on our on my SoundCloud. What you got, Boo? Screenshot. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm just gonna go off of what I saved last or liked last. <laughs> I love this song. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> I love this song. So we obviously love our dubstep here. Yeah, that's Odd that. Prophet Rhythm Love song. Yeah. So that that's was great. a fun question. <laughs> Absolutely. I screenshot that one. On right. to the next. Your turn. <clears throat> How many clients do you take on personally? Will you be accepting more clients in the next couple of months? So. Um, I typically will take on about 90 to 100. I've scaled back. I used to take on comfortably about 120 to 125. Before I hired help, it was about 150 to 175. So obviously as we continue to hire more help, I've kind of learned to scale back and be pretty precise in the athletes and clients that I take on. Um, I'm taking on more higher level athletes as far as uh, you know, professional athletes. Um, but I do have a few spots open for certain lifestyle clients that are more advanced, more than happy to do that. And I do have, you know, a couple more spots open. Um, I'm, I'm pretty flexible right now, now that I'm not prepping. So, um, if you guys are interested in, uh, you know, working with us, serious only serious inquiries only, we'll, uh, put the link in the bio. So yeah. fill out an application. Am I answering that too? Might as well. Okay. <laughs> um, Right now, I've just found like my happy spot is any around 90 clients. I do have, I'm about at like 80 right now. So I do have some openings too. So I definitely think it's a good idea to maybe get started before the new year comes. I know a lot of people kind of wait, but typically I, I try not to go over 90 clients. That went, what, a few years ago, I was at like 120. That was a lot. That was a lot for me. So I've scaled back too. And I take on both lifestyle and competition prep. I like both. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I just burped a little bit. Hopefully the mic didn't affect that. I was like, <laughs> trying to be, be very subtle about it. <laughs> Next question. Hey, All it's right. my turn. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Sorry, I just get so excited. You're right, go. Who's your worst enemy? Worst enemy? I don't think we have oh. enemies. Who's your worst enemy? Well, you got to answer the question. <laughs> That's an uh... interesting question to ask. Who's your worst enemy? I don't like not liking people, so I really can't, I do not have an answer for that one, and I feel like you do not either. Um, I'd have to say dietary fats. Why does Ben and Jerry's have to have so many fucking grams of fat per pint? That is, that's my worst enemy. Straight up. Typical dietitian answer, I feel. <laughs> dietary fats, worst enemy. Dietary fats, yeah, same. Final answer. <laughs> I have no answer for that one. Yeah, that that, that works. Yeah. Yeah, that one's what about, perfect. What about maybe your cycle or something? I was like about that. to say that. Yeah. My period. Period, maybe? I guess. I mean, yeah, it doesn't have to be a person. <laughs> right? This is, I mean, it's your response. Whatever's your worst enemy. Like the first thing that comes to your mind. Like something that you've made. the thing. I don't have anything that yeah. comes to my mind right We'll away. say cycle for you. Sure, my period. <laughs> <laughs> I'll answer for her. It's her cycle. Because. That's his version. Uh, <laughs> it's maybe my secondary answer too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> on to the next one. What do we got here? We got a question that was asked pretty frequently what here. Oh, yeah, I have that too. So we can kind of just show what the question is. Okay, yeah. You so um, what happened between you, Natalie, Spirka, and Lauren? Um, I'm actually glad that we got this question. 
A lot of people have been asking us this question. So um, nothing really happened. You know, um, it was a mutual decision that we decided to allow Natalie to kind of take time for herself and her own mental health. Um, so it was a mutual decision to allow her to kind of just put a pause on coaching clients for BA. And we just really don't see her too much right now because she's got a new job and she's working her ass off, which we absolutely yeah. encourage and we love to see. So I think um, too, it's just we were spending a lot of time together, you know, and I, yeah. it was um i think it's just the fact of like people probably just don't see her on her stories that much yeah but when she, she was working, working. When she was working with ba she's full-time ba you know she's yeah. able to her schedule is a lot more flexible but now that she's working at the job that she is she's at a time constraint you know she has to be a, she's working very frequently and um it's taken a lot out of her schedule yeah yeah. I used to bartend and work in that, and it's it's late nights and it's you're late sleeping nights during and you're the sleeping day. In the mornings, because yeah, that's. I know she doesn't even lift as much. Honestly, yeah, because we usually like train. Working so we usually much. see her at the gym, but um, yeah, we're training around eleven or noon, and she's most likely still sleeping around that time, yeah. so she doesn't get to the gym later. So, yeah, but uh, we're still friends. Don't worry. All right, nothing but love. <laughs> Your turn. That was my turn. Okay, <laughs> let's see. Oh, answer that one already. What the? I see this, <laughs> this one's fun. This is interesting. <laughs> I just got an interesting okay, one go. too. What do you got? Do you guys participate in BDSM or play with other partners? You both are sexy. So, <laughs> hey, thanks, anonymous thanks. person. Asking Whoever this you question. are. What is, what is BDSM? So I didn't even know what BDSM was. That's like until the canes, two, the way. Yes. Yeah, so the two weeks ago, we were in in California, and one of our buddies that we we're hanging out with, oh, yeah. were like he invited us to a BDSM party, and I shit you not. So those of you that are into EDM, I thought he said BTSM. <laughs> the DJ. I was like, wait, there's <laughs> there's a there's, there's a DJ party somewhere. With I'm absolutely there, and he was like, no BD. <laughs> SM, not BTSM. <laughs> right? I, I mean, it does sound the same. Yeah. It does sound really Well, especially because we were in the club and it was loud. <laughs> BDSM. Oh, BTSM? Yeah, I'm there. Is that a party? Oh, BDSM. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll think about it. <laughs> we didn't get yeah. it. Yeah, but I really didn't know what it was. That's why. I didn't It's even... like dominance. Honestly, it kind of scares me a little bit. That's it... not super. I like, you know, of course, when you're like in control, but like the chains and I don't know. That's so kind of scary. it's a party that everybody. Well, no, BD, BDSM is a just type of like, like foreplay or sexual. Like okay, it but, can just be with two people. Okay, but what like that after party? It was a BDSM party. So I could not tell. It was probably like an orgy or something. I don't know. I mean, I'm all for new experiences. So I don't know. Yeah, but we're not into that kind of like the chains. That no excite me thing. <laughs> But as far Change as the other part exciting. of the question, do you have play with other partners? We have had yeah. a threesome before. Twice. We've had a couple. Three and it's been fun. Yeah. And absolutely. <laughs> and yeah, we actually enjoy it. So, um, and it's nothing that it's like planned. We don't do that. We have not done the, the planned threesome. It's kind of just happened. And yeah. um, it's actually quite intimate. And it actually is very hot and brings <laughs> it's brought lauren and i even that much closer together which is crazy because you you know you ask us years ago in the beginning of a relationship you know if we'd ever add an additional you know female to the equation i wouldn't have like, said absolutely no. no absolutely no I but um you know no. as you develop that much more trust and you communicate everything it's kind of it's just fun it's i think really that fun. that should at least this is how i think it worked for us mm -hmm. I think having that trust and communication and just solid, you know, relationship prior to, the, you know, a third person just kind of joining in, joining in. Um, I don't know if it could be successful for us if we didn't have that already. Yeah, I, so you I know? recommend if anybody's ever, you know, if you guys are questioning about having a threesome, <laughs> you might, uh, you know, try to establish that trust. If you guys yeah, don't first. trust one another, then I could see oh, I could shit 100%. Not, not going well. Because it is a lot to have somebody else then knowing, you know, they're but involved also, in something that's so intimate already. Yeah, and, and like the first time that has ever happened with us, um, we were all like talking together, like, are we all cool with this? Yeah, it's, all on the same you page. You communicate, you communicate, and everybody was, and, and that's that. And again, like that those experiences have actually brought us together that much more because we trust another that much more so yeah like afterwards really cool. i knew he wasn't going to go and like partake in something behind my back or anything yeah. like yeah i think that's why people could easily get in their head about those that's things, why you right? have to have trust first yeah. before going into those experiences so yeah. excellent question um this kind of piggybacks off of that oh boy what's well, uh, nothing too crazy just said do you you got a sneaky link you got a sneaky link? I'm assuming like a... Um, what is that? 
what it's like a uh, sneaky link is that like a um only fans only fans is what i'm thinking we don't no sneaky link <laughs> that's not so funny right? that's what it is i'm it's assuming sneaky. i you got a that sneaky is. link what what do you think chase it's a song by hollywood <laughs> sneaky what? Link. what is sneaky link sneaky link means someone you're secretly having sex with oh so oh. it means basically who are you cheating oh you got a sneaky link oh no <laughs> still no <laughs> and if there was like anything, we told you we're like we, like we just told you <laughs> yeah we're we make sure that we're together in those kind of or urban dictionary oh says a sneaky link can be a sexual or non-sexual experience that nobody knows about well we just simply did. a sneaky link is just a secret hookup Oh, I mean, we've never Sneaky. verbally said that we've had a threesome, so there's a surprise. <laughs> I mean, we have, maybe just not on YouTube yet. You know what I'm saying to the <laughs> public. <laughs> yeah, cool. All right. All right, my turn. Go. What are some of the biggest struggles you faced in your fitness journeys, and how did you overcome them? Hmm. Ooh. All right, let me think. Biggest struggles. Honestly, I'd say from like when I first started competing with like the meal plan, and then following that had a really bad relationship with food, but I found macros and that honestly helped me have a better mindset to food and just feel comfortable in my body and have a little bit more of a flexible lifestyle with it. Mm -hmm. um, and that led me to getting my pro card down the road. Yeah, absolutely. So um, for me, one of the biggest fitness struggles that I would say I've encountered personally was, um, so my clients are my priority. And when I'm prepping um, for myself, I still make them a priority. And sometimes I put myself on the back burner and don't put as myself as the priority. Because again, like my clients are they get my all my attention. Um, even you know, I've I've competed in shows with my clients, which is an awesome experience. And I still am right there answering their questions, making sure they are taken care of, and then I make sure I'm taken care of. Um, so that's kind of like one of the biggest struggles is trying to figure out like how to balance that. But I've never had an issue with it um, mm -hmm. because just as much as I have pay attention to them and their priorities, I, I do. I have I have grown to like make myself that much of a, more of a priority. Yeah. As if I was like my own client too. Yeah. So. I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. Next cue. Your thoughts on women using growth hormone? Uh, yeah, so not against it. Very few of my athletes um, are actually on growth hormone, but it does have its time and its place. Um, for, I definitely say, more advanced athletes, professional athletes. If you're not a professional athlete, I would not recommend it, but um, it can help like be the icing on the cake uh, for certain factors such as just amplifying the overall muscle fullness, muscle growth to a degree. It's really not what everybody hypes it up to be. Um, and you're gonna really notice subtle differences. It's, again, it's for like elite athletes that have already done everything from the dietary training, supplemental aspect, they've put in the time and the years of work, and now they're just looking for that next thing. That would be that next thing, the very probably last thing that I would mm -hmm. recommend. Um, and for those that I, my females that I do have on growth hormone, it's just a minimal dose of about one, maybe two I use four to six times a week, depending on the individual. And those that we do have on um, on insulin, or not insulin, on growth <laughs> hormone, no insulin for females, insulin for certain guys maybe, um, we monitor their blood glucose very frequently because with growth hormone injections, you can actually increase your fasting blood glucose. So, hmm. you know, we want to closely monitor that. What if it does go up? Does that mean they have to go with like So we can insulin? do a couple different things. No, 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 no. Oh. So that, again, that's why a lot of guys pair uh, growth hormone with insulin um, mm -hmm. because they're running growth hormone and it increases their fasting blood glucose so they utilize insulin fasting or you know uh, long-acting insulin or a fast-acting insulin mm -hmm. to counteract that and bring those blood sugars down right so yeah, so if, using insulin. so if they if the females blood, blood sugar started to go up you just scale back on the dose of, of oh, growth okay. hormone. Right. yeah I learned something new today yeah excellent <laughs> question all right. I like this one. What are your client red flags? I like that. Do you want to start or do you want me to? Go ahead. So for me, let's say like a, you know, I get a new inquiry application. I'm going over yeah. it. I'd say I, I, when I read this ahead of time, 
I was like, there's <laughs> two that came to mind. So first one, just because of my credentials and what I can and can't take on um, for coaching or just what I don't feel comfortable with because it's just out of my scope of practice. A red flag for me is if the client says that they have an active eating disorder um, or, you know, really extreme binging, purging. That's a red flag for all of our coaches yeah. across the board. So Unless if we get an application, Kim, Kim Barton can yeah, do that. So if we get an application, but actually not current. Eating no, right, right. Previous. So like previous eating disorder history and they've kind of, they've overcome it. Then we give it, to, uh, we give those clients to our uh, dietitian, mm -hmm. Kim Barton, who has, is very well versed in, um, eating disorders and she has a specialty in that. I mean, so I'll take on clients that. that maybe they did in the past and they're okay. I will yeah. do that. Well, you can kind of get the cues. Like you can, they, you can pick up on just the way that, you know, things are worded or said, but. Yeah, but it's unfortunate how many online coaches will take on clients just to make extra money, even if they have a disordered eating issue, because that's it's fucked up. It really yeah. is. Um, they need more help than an online nutrition coach or dietitian. At that point in time, they need a psychologist or a therapist because that's a mental health issue. Yeah. Yep. What else? Oh, <laughs> if they like at, in some point said so that they worked with this coach, this coach, this coach, this team, this coach, like yeah. that's a red flag to me. Like you've coach hopped that many times. I'm going to be number whatever on the, you know, that list. So I usually, that's a red flag to me. Yeah. What about you? Um, red flags. What I mentioned one the other day, I feel like. What was I talking about? Oh, <laughs> you, you said um, it's their first week starting with you and they're already oh, asking what their some... intuitive eating day is. <laughs> yeah, so um, I usually don't deal with this anymore, but when I was dealing with a lot of first-time athletes, um, I've had a, several clients ask me the you know first day or week of coaching, uh, do you do What's my first or, you know, untracked days or things like that? I'm like, uh, you're already asking about this. This is not going to work out. Yeah. So um, that's definitely a big red flag. But like I said, I personally don't get that too, too often anymore, thankfully. Um, let's see here. Another red flag would be I've coached a lot of bikini girls and increased their intakes to crazy amounts. Um, to the point where, you know, I have some bikini athletes eating 500 to 600 grams of carbohydrates a day and their body weight during a growing phase and their body weight has like remained stagnant. That's, That's a red flag to me because... <laughs> Pre-permission. <laughs> Truck, go away. So that's a red flag for me because um, there's not too many bikini girls that can push down that much food and calories and carbohydrates and really not gain weight. So at that point in time, uh, I've, I've, been, I've had this happen a handful of times and I've kind of, you know, asked them, are you truly eating what you're logging? And I've kind of looked and further assessed um, a couple different ways to make sure that they are eating what I'm prescribing. And uh, I've caught a couple girls lying to me as far as they're not eating their intakes. I'm like, you're only hurting yourself. Like, why, why yeah. are you like logging this and, and not, not actually, actually eating it? So and again, it kind of comes about, down to what Lauren first addressed they might not have the most healthy relationship with food and they're kind of scared to put on that weight yeah. that they really do need to. So, um, yeah, that's, that's a red flag. Good answers. Advice if someone is thinking of leaving a coach mid prep. This is a good question. It because is. Because we get so this many clients, well. truly, like every week, um, we get a client coming from a different coach mid prep, two weeks out, peak week, um, yeah, we even had that. It's unfortunate. I mean, especially with the the peak weeks. I mean, I'm like, this is crazy. Yeah. Um, but it happens a lot of times. And what There's I what going I, through that right now, she competes tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. It's sad. Um, so what we do if if that client is coming to us from a different coach, we tell them, hey, like, tell your coach, talk it yeah. over with your coach, because we kind of communication. Wanna, because we're putting ourselves in that coach's shoes too. Like, you just want to be able to communicate with your coach, even if you're not. Uh, you feel like you're not having the best fit or the best experience, communicate that with your coach. And if your coach doesn't need, know that, then maybe they, they shift their the way that they're coaching you. Yeah. Um, or just, you know, you just kind of let them know like you're not the best fit for them. And, you know, coaches need to understand that they're not going to be the best fit for everybody. And, well, and I think a good too, coach will accept that. And... Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> what are you going to say? I was going to say, I think too, it's just a matter of like put, I mean, this is your health this is your success in the sport and you know maybe that does mean you need to have a tough conversation with your current coach if you're thinking of switching teams but mm -hmm. as long as you communicate and then just you know understand that you're doing it for yourself that's the biggest thing too 
Yeah, absolutely. So you got to do what's best for you. And if that means leaving your current coach and hiring somebody else, you do you. Yeah. Um, I have one more. So this is my last one. Um, what is your favorite sport? <laughs> I feel like I'm in like school. But I feel like this is like a, little, like a school. Lauren doesn't watch sports. I don't. I'm going to say bodybuilding and gymnastics. I love gymnastics. <laughs> Such a typical answer. What? Gymnastics? No, bodybuilding. bodybuilding. Well, that's because all I do now. But <laughs> gymnastics, I can watch gymnastics competitions like it's my job. Nice. Uh-huh. <laughs> cool. I'm going to say drag racing because I drag, started drag racing when I was... Absolutely. People are going to ask, is bodybuilding a sport? A sport is whatever you make it. True. It's like a hobby. Sport True. slash hobby. I feel like sports are hobbies. Hobbies are sports, you know? Yeah. Um, drag racing and if you said bodybuilding, bodybuilding, obviously. Um, and then, like, favorite sport to play? Football. I love playing football. Absolutely. And kickball. That's really not... I had a client. In dodgeball. Fuck Wait, yeah. I didn't I tell you. What? Uh, my client, Becca, who just got like done competing this year, she's uh, on a kickball term- ter- or a kickball team. Really? Yeah. Uh-huh. And yeah. I was like, oh, Dylan would love that. <laughs> yeah. Or flag football. I love flag football, too. Oh, that is so fun. Is there a league out here, Chase? We should... You got to create one. I would <laughs> absolutely create one. You got to manifest. Yeah, I used, to, I used to coach flag football, and we got into it. Flag no. Oh, my God. Flag football Count is so out. fun. Just keep spinning. I'll so be the cheerleader. I'll be the cheerleader. Okay, that's great. <laughs> All right, let's let's do it, Chase. Just us. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> just, just, just Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you could recruit people. Mm-hmm. Oh, you could yeah. definitely cr- recruit we'll people. We'll have a good time. All right, my questions are done. All right. Pick fun ones. Are you bisexual? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not bisexual. I'm straight. So we, yeah, whenever we do these threesomes, it's, there's always an, another girl, girl. In the equation. Um, not about the the guys. No offense, <laughs> but yeah, I'm sh- I'm straight. I'm surprised. I'm sure that that surprises many people. <laughs> I'm a metro. I'm very like. He is. Comfortable. I love that you're in tune with that feminine side. No, absolutely, side. absolutely, but and that's it. Yeah, and it's funny because a lot of I tell a lot of people I used to work at a gay bar in undergrad, and I'd work behind the bar and everybody would like bet if i was straight or gay and they they all guessed i was straight they all knew it yeah yeah the gaydar wasn't going off i guess not a lot of people said it was the beard but there's a lot of gay people with beards yeah so, i don't know yeah they just know yeah they said it was just the way i carried myself though too but oh i don't know hmm. you're just down to have a good time <laughs> i'm down to have a good time i'm very comfortable with my skin that's it yeah, you are so but no Usually i'm not naked <laughs> Yes. Am I answering that one or was did, Go I, ahead. did we? Go well, ahead. like you, I guess you kind of already did. I wouldn't, I don't really know. By curious. Yeah, I or guess like, that's what you would say. It's not, I like, I right, have so always cool. dated guys and that's definitely the way that I would go. Yeah. But then I don't have any issues if there's like another, obviously this is new to me, but if there was like another girl involved, I'm okay with that, but I probably wouldn't go out of my way just to like separate and be like, bye guys, and then just stick with girls. So I guess by curious, I don't know. I mean, by just down to have a good time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Straight up. All right. Let's see here. What else we got? Can women taking hormonal birth control use Anavar oh. and or other PEDs? Great question. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'll let you go first. Yeah. Don't forget to screenshot it. Okay. I mean, yeah, you can definitely still use PEDs, but what I think would be really crucial and important before starting any PEDs is getting some blood work first, just to see you where your hormones stand with your birth control. Now, obviously that might throw off your hormones a little bit, or you know, maybe it's not reading as accurate, but I think it's smart to definitely get that baseline with that birth control before deciding if implementing PEDs is a good call because these can also uh, make hormones fluctuate and, and change. Yeah, absolutely. And that's exactly what I was going to say. So we are huge advocates of getting labs drawn pretty routinely, especially if you're on birth control. I can tell you how many clients have come to us on birth control that have never had a history yeah. of getting their labs checked. And Crazy. that's a big red flag right there, fam, especially if you're There's having... There's doctors that will say, I'm not going to draw, mm. draw your labs because you're on birth control, which yeah. blows my mind. Yeah, so we want to see what your physiology is doing, especially if you are on birth control. And if everything is 
okay and you're mentally cool with this and you understand the pros and the cons which we research or we um, educate all of our clients on the pros and the cons when it comes to certain compounds if they decide to go the PED route then at that time we can talk about implementing a um, methodical and effective protocol um, I see no reason why not but um, yeah it just kind of depends on the physiology yeah. Ooh. oh okay I like that personality or looks personality personality and then looks, but i lucked looks out great. he's both yeah same <laughs> let's go <laughs> yeah i mean but the thing is like actually i straight up like wait we're all attracted to to, to physical looks like we, yeah we like all, that plays into it but personality is more important but i would say like what started or what made me pursue her was the physical attraction of her blue eyes and dark hair i just am attracted to that Oh, and to me at the time, I was like, damn, that girl looks like Megan Fox. I I'll need, take that. I need her in my life. I'll take that. <laughs> so then it really like made me like passionate and motivated to go out. So those looks first? Oh, yeah, I, 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 it really makes really sense because I, I didn't really know her. I just yeah. knew her. Um, you know, her Facebook profile, I can see it was her in a ponytail, her blue eyes just like shining bright. I'm like, damn, that girl's going to be mine one day. <laughs> and then I actively pursued her and I made her mine. So manifested that shit. See? Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, I think we'll end it there. Sure. That works. <laughs> Actually, that was fun. We'll yeah. have to do that more often. Love you. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, and yeah, we'll see you in the next vlog. <laughs>